sir. We have nine. Wait, how we can go? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Rabi ji, please. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Uh, today happens to be a very, very interesting and important day where we are going to announce the Diversity and Inclusion Excellence Awards in uh, by SHM. And this is very, very auspicious day also because uh, because of many, many reasons. Which we're discussing, uh, you know, like, you know, as uh, we are moving into a new uh, phase, like, you know, uh, this is a new era where we are moving towards getting the vaccinations done, most probably in the coming months. A lot of new things are happening in India. Environment is very charged, very positively. Budget has been spoken about. Companies, uh, new regulations have come on the CSR. And uh, with this, I would love to request Mr. Vineet Agrawal, who is President, SHM and Managing Di Director, Transport Corporation of India Limited, to give his welcome address for the first session, please. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Ravi ji. It's my honor to welcome Shri Honorable Shri Ratan Lal Kataria ji, Minister of State, Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment, and Ministry of Jal Shakti. Uh, Shri Ashish Shivasar ji, Additional Secretary, Ministry of uh, Women and Child Development. Shri Ravi Bhattanagari, Shri Anil Rajput, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, today is a very important uh, subject that we are discussing, diversity and inclusion. They both go together and inclusion helps us to foresee changes, transform our organizations and eventually boost growth and sustainable development to build tomorrow's business and progressively and in a progressive society and a prosperous nation. COVID-19 has had a major impact on socio-economic uh, areas and has created a, a lot of challenges and uncertainties. As responsible business houses, groups, organizations and entities, uh, our vision is to combine the passion and commitment of our people, including leadership and partners in this new social uh, order. The pandemic had, has hit many people like working women, persons with disabilities, very hard. It has been reported that even eight months after the lockdown was imposed, 13% of fewer women than a year ago were employed at looking for jobs, compared to 2% fewer men with urban women recording the deepest job losses. Worldwide, many of these marginalized communities are a large untapped pool of talent as their participation in the workforce is disproportionately low. The coming times are very crucial to create the right action to strengthen the business through diversity and inclusion. These policies ensure the better management and development and retaining of key talent, pushing innovation and above all, very good business growth. India has a robust constitution and several anti-discrimination statutes that guarantee equality and prohibit discrimination on various grounds. Uh, a wide range of policies are aimed at women, persons with disabilities, the LGBT community and other marginalized groups to ensure that the boundaries of equality and inclusion is maintained in the workplace. For example, the Rights of Persons with Disabilities Act 2016 is one of those finest examples of legislation that provides for welfare measures that and positive duties and obligations for the overall development of uh, persons with disabilities and their full participation in all aspects of life. Sir, here I would like to add that our organization is also working very closely. We have established the Artificial Limb Center, uh, Jaipur Foot, in places like Patna and other places so that people, and free of cost, so that people can get that benefit. However, a lot needs to be done uh, and industries need to join hands with government and create programs, for example, skilling programs for people to succeed in this group. Together, we can nurture and build new skills to bring in employment gaps, to bridge the employment gaps and advance client sustainability, accelerating equality in the workplace. As COVID-19 reshapes our business, it's time for leaders to reinforce inclusiveness and embrace differences more widely. On behalf of ASUCHAM, I assure you that all our ST members will leave no stone unturned and generously open their hearts for providing equal opportunity, equal employment opportunity, and other policy interventions to promote diversity and inclusion in the workplace, 
in both letter and spirit. Thank you, sir. Thank you for coming and joining us today and honoring us with your presence. Thank you so much, Viniji. Uh, now we move to the next agenda on opening remarks and uh, brief of the awards. I would love to request uh, Mr. Anil Rajputji, who is chairperson of SHM CSR Council and senior vice president corporate affairs at ITC Limited. For those uh, who don't know about the ITC, like during this COVID days, it was Sevalon, which uh, protected all of us to a very, very large extent. So, heartily welcome, Mr. Anil Rajputji, for uh, giving your opening remarks and briefing about the award. Thank you very much, uh, Devi. Uh, Shri Radhan Lal Kataria Ji, Honorable Minister of State, Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment, Government of India. Shri Ashish Srivastava Ji, Additional Secretary, Ministry of Women and Child Development, Government of India. Shri Vineet Agarwal Ji, President, SHM. Distinguished guests and friends, Good morning to all of you. And today happens to be Chinese New Year also. So it's another world where, you know, it's, a, it's an auspicious day as somebody mentioned. So auspicious for uh, another part of the world also. I must compliment uh, the president of SHM for setting the tone for the awards. Diversity and inclusion is close to my heart. They imbibe the makeup of our nation. That of unity and diversity, this is our strength. This makes us different and allows us of having people with different color, caste, gender, religion, and their perspectives to contribute to the nation building and overall success of India. I firmly believe that corporates need to focus on this critical parameter and imbibe the characteristics of diversity and inclusion in their organizations, in the letter and in spirit. When organizations make efforts and emphasize on diversity and inclusion, the results are pure magic. It turns weakness into strength, brings the variety of different perspectives to the table, increases creativity, improves employee engagement, reduces employee turnover, improves hiring results. And all this adds up to increase profits for such companies. While we have come a long way, I must emphasize that we have a long way to go. I'm pleased to share that we received more than 80 nominations in different categories from organizations and multinational companies of all sizes for this second SHM Diversity and Inclusion Excellence Awards. And despite the tough and challenging times of COVID-19, there were three categories of awards the best employer for DNI policies, best employer for PWDs, and best employer for women. All the three categories were divided as per the number of employees working in the companies. There was a small category of 250 to 1,000 employees, medium category of 1,001 to 5,000 employees, and the large category of 5,001 employees and above. The jury fixed parameters like percentage of women employed, PWDs, LGBT, LGTBQ, and other marginalized groups, percentage in higher ranks of top management in companies, maternity leaves, paternity leaves, pick up and drop facilities, security, skill training programs, equal opportunity policies, equal wages, POSH training programs, hygiene facilities, flexible working hours, initiative during COVID-19, 
so on and so forth. The jury held four rounds of meetings and held in-depth evaluations. I'm sure that the jury members who would agree with me that arriving at a decision to choose the winner was extremely difficult. I would also like to extend my heartiest compliments to all the participating organizations which have followed and implemented these important parameters. Having said this, we have few observations. A concerted effort is needed by the organizations to ensure when women participation across different levels. In addition, we were surprised to learn that corporations are very less active in providing employment to persons with disabilities. The number stands at a dismal 1%. There are a host of other issues, which for the sake of brevity, I will skip. Let us say that half well begun is half done. And I'm sure there is earnestness and determination on the part of corporates to achieve a lot more on the aspects of diversity and inclusion. And I would like to assure Honorable Minister that SOCHAM will, will do everything possible going forward to work shoulder to shoulder with your ministry in doing the utmost for the benefit of all those people who require inclusion in our society. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Aminji, for setting that tone for the day. And it's been very inspiring to see the journey of uh, small corporates, big corporates, MNCs in India, and a lot of effort which has been put by the, the you know, respected jury uh, to shortlist and to finalize. There were a lot of debates, a lot of discussions on who should be awarded, what are the minimum benchmarks, and how we up our game totally, you know, and we show to the world outside India, like, you know, how uh, how strength, how we are strengthening our system in India in terms of you know, diversity and inclusion. Uh, one example I must share with, uh, you know, with, with everyone is like, you know, how transgenders are actually, you know, managing one of the metro stations in Noida. That India has witnessed very recently and that too happened uh, in this government, like, you know, government has given the opportunity to do that. Second big landmark happened uh, last year when the Alabad, last to last year when the Alabad Kum happened. It was a formation of the Kinnar Akhara, the transgender Akhara, by, uh, you know, with the Juna Akhara. So, a lot of new things are happening in the diversity inclusion space, uh, socially. There's more acceptance, people are moving towards it, and government is very, uh, you know, firm on supporting the agenda of diversity and inclusion. Going forward, uh, we'll be sharing, uh, so the, we have, uh, you know, uh, six, seven, six speakers. They will be sharing, you know, uh, their stories. Uh, I'm, I'm stories for the award winners. It starts with Ms. Vimi Gujral, at HR and Admin, Modi Care uh, Limited. So the winner for the best employer for policies on diversity and inclusion in small category. Number two, uh, Mr. Vinayak Yadav, uh, he's a business HR partner, Every Denison India Private Limited, is a winner for the best employer for the PWD in the small category. Number three, um, President HR, Agilman India Private Limited, winner for the best employer for the women in small category. Number four, uh, Ms. Tina Vinod, Head of Diversity, and Equity and Inclusion and Social Change, uh, thought The winner in both categories, best employer for policies on DNI and women in the medium category. Uh, next is Mr. Aji George, head organizational capacity Wipro Limited, winner in the best employer for the PWDs, and second, uh, second runner up in DNI large category. Last but not the least, Ms. Gayatri Ramamurthy, senior director lead, diversity and inclusion, and learning head Cape Gemini, India. So they're the winners. In both categories, uh, best employer for the policies on DNI and women, and second runner up in the PW in the large category. <laughs> I would request all these uh, 
विनर्स टू स्पीक फॉर अ मिनट एंड शेयर द रिस्पेक्टिव रवि जी रवि जी एक जस्ट मिनट जस्ट मिनट प्लीज योगेश प्लीज ऑन स्लाइड या उंडेशन से Bissor India Services Private Limited, first runner-up and best employer for PWDs in small category. Avi Danielson India Private Limited is a winner in uh, best employer for PWDs in small category. Kuloska Brothers Limited is second runner-up in our uh, best employer for women in small category. Now is a uh, M B India Enterprise Private Limited first runner up in best employer for women in small category. Now is the winner is a Adelman India Private Limited in best employer for women in small category. Sony Picture of uh, Network Private Limited second runner up in best oh. employer for D N I in medium category. Comeba Technologies Limited is first runner up and best employer for D&D in medium category. Thoughtwise Technology India Private Limited winner in best employer for D&D in medium category. Sony Pictures Network Private Limited is second runner up in best employer for women in medium category. Krishna Limited is the first runner up in best employer for women in medium category. Again, as a thought box technology India private limited a winner in best employer for women in medium category. Now we come on a uh, last category. So a Bipro Limited is the second runner up in best employer for D and I in last category. Is a Tech Mahindra Limited is a first runner up in best templar for in D and I category in last category. Now is a winner is a Cap Gemini Technology Services India Limited is a winner in best templar for D and I in last category. Again, is a uh, Cap Gemini Technology Services India Limited is a second runner up in best templar for PWDs in last category. As a Minda Corporation uh, Limited is a first runner up in best employer for PWDs in last category. So, uh, and winner is uh, Bipro Limited as a in best employer for PWDs in last category. Mind Tree Limited, second runner up in best employer for women in last category. So uh, here is a uh, tough competition. So we uh, share the second runner up in uh, two among two companies as a uh, uh, standard charter India is second runner up in best employer for women in last category. Of uh, daily performance India is a first runner up and best employer for women in last category. Now the winner in best temper for women last category, Cap Gemini Technology Services India Limited. Congratulations to all uh, winners. Uh, I uh, over to Mr. Ravi Watnagar. Yeah, 
अधिकारीगण आज
पूरे जोश के साथ आगे बढ़ रही है क्योंकि हमारा मुख्य उद्देश्य है कि ये लोग आर्थिक स्वतंत्रता के साथ गरी में जीवन का भरपूर आनंद ले पाए और समाज में प्रभावी तथा बेहतर भूमिका निभा पाए इस दिशा में मंत्रालय का सुगम्य भारत अभियान के तहत दिव्यांगजनों के सशक्तिकरण विभाग का राष्ट्रव्यापी फ्लैगशिप अभियान चल रहा है जिसका उद्देश्य पूरे देश में दिव्यांगजनों के लिए बाधा मुक्त और अनुकूल वातावरण बनाना है दिव्यांगजनों के अधिकार कानून एक्ट 2016 के तहत दिव्यांगजनों को किसी भी किस्म के भेदभाव से संरक्षण प्राप्त करता है और किसी भी भेदभाव को निषेध करता है विकलांगता कानून दिव्यांगजनों को विभिन्न प्रकार के भेदभावों से इनके उपायों को बढ़ाता है तथा अवसर की समानता और पर्याप्त पहुंच सुनिश्चित करता है यहाँ मैं विकलांगता कानून के सबसे प्रमुख तत्वों में से एक का विशेष रूप से जिक्र करना चाहूंगा कि दिव्यांगजनों के लिए उनके अधिकारों की सुविधा प्रदान कराना पूर्ण रूप से सरकार का दायित्व है और मुझे यह बताते हुए बेहद खुशी हो रही है कि सरकार इसे पूरी जिम्मेवारी से निभा रही है आरपीडब्ल्यूटी अधिनियम 2016 में रोजगार और शिक्षा के क्षेत्र में आरक्षण कोटा तीन से बढ़ाकर चार प्रतिशत करने का प्रावधान है हालांकि कॉर्पोरेट्स द्वारा इन दिशा निर्देशों के अनुपालन में सुधार करने की आवश्यकता है क्योंकि अधिकांश कंपनियां कंपनियों में दिव्यांगजनों को केवल एक प्रतिशत रोजगार ही मुहैया हो पा रहा है सरकार दिव्यांगजनों के लिए रोजगार अवसर को बढ़ावा देने के लिए निजी नियोक्ताओं को प्रोत्साहित करती है इस योजना के तहत सरकार कर्मचारी भविष्य निधि और कर्मचारी राज्य बीमा में नियोक्ता के योगदान का भुगतान लाभ के रूप में करती है इस कड़ी में एक अहम बात यह है कि ट्रांसजेंडर्स अक्सर अपनी लैंगिक पहचान से जुड़े सामाजिक कलंक के खिलाफ संघर्ष करते हैं परिणाम स्वरूप इस समुदाय के लोग सामाजिक बहिष्कार का सामना करते हैं जिससे वे समुचित विकास से वंचित होकर सामाजिक हासियत पर रहने को मजबूर हो जाते हैं हालांकि भारत में पिछले कुछ एक वर्षों में व्यक्तियों के अधिकारों की रक्षा के लिए महत्वपूर्ण प्रगति हुई है ट्रांसजेंडर व्यक्ति अधिनियम 2019 उन्हें गरिमा जीवन की गारंटी के लिए समुचित दिशा निर्देश प्रदान करने तथा उनके समान उपचार की गारंटी देने की दिशा में एक महत्वपूर्ण और मील का पत्थर है मैं यहाँ पर एसोचैम्स के सभी अधिकारियों से ये भी कहना चाहूंगा कि हमारा मंत्रालय नशा मुक्त भारत बनाने के लिए सारे देश के अंदर एक अभियान चला रहा है और दो जिलों में हमने इस प्रकार के नशा मुक्ति केंद्र खोलने का भी निर्णय लिया है जहां पर हम अपने देश की युवा पीढ़ी को इन बुराइयों से बचाकर राष्ट्र की मुख्य धारा में लाने का प्रयत्न करते हैं ताकि वो सामाजिक और आर्थिक स्तर के ऊपर सबल बन सके मैं इस अवसर पर इंडस्ट्री लीडर्स को आर्थिक बधाई और दिल से शुभकामनाएं देता हूं कि 
एक और तो यह है भविष्य के लिए नए व्यवसाय अवसर का निर्माण कर रहे हैं और साथ ही साथ पूरी शिद्दत जिम्मेवारी और प्रतिबद्धता के साथ अपने वर्तमान वर्किंग कल्चर में दिव्यांगजनों के हित में विविधता और समावेशी मूल्यों को आत्मसात भी कर रहे हैं जो कि इस समुदाय के लोगों का सामाजिक अधिकार भी है इस अवसर पर मैं उन संगठनों की सराहना करना चाहता हूं जो रोजगार के समान अवसर की सुविधा के लिए सराहनीय योगदान दे रहे हैं हालांकि इस दिशा में खासकर दिव्यांगजन महिला सशक्तिकरण ट्रांसजेंडर के लिए गरिमा मय जीवन सुनिश्चित करने की दिशा में उद्योग से और अधिक सहयोग की अपेक्षा करते हैं और मेरा मानना है कि अपेक्षा तो उन्हीं से की जाती है जो इसके स्वर्थता योग्य होते हैं इस दिशा में हम ऐसे चम के साथ साझेदारी को इच्छुक हैं ताकि वे लोग लैंगिक विविधता दिव्यांगजनों एच आई पॉजिटिव और ट्रांसजेंडर समुदाय के लिए समान अवसर उपलब्ध कराने की दिशा में एसोचम सदस्यों और कॉरपोरेट्स को हमारी मदद करने के लिए तैयार कर सकें हम चाहते हैं कि एसोचम यह महती जिम्मेवारी निभाए कि उद्योग जगत समुचित सामाजिक न्याय को उसी स्पिरिट में अपने वर्किंग कल्चर में समाहित करे जैसा सरकार सोचती है जय हिंद भारत माता की जय नमस्कार जी बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद आपका आपने हमें टाइम दिया और हम रिक्वेस्ट करते हैं आप हमारे साथ एटलीस्ट दस मिनट और रहें क्योंकि जो पिनर्स हैं वो आपके सामने वन वन मिनट बोलना चाहते हैं नहीं मैं मुझे लोकसभा जाना है सर पांच मिनट का रिक्वेस्ट है सर पांच मिनट में फिर प्लीज सर Uh, firstly, I would like to thank the SHM uh, Awards Committee for selecting Modi Care for this uh, prestigious award. I am uh, incredibly honored to accept this on behalf of Modi Care. Uh, at Modi Care, uh, we have a very strong culture and values that binds us, and we have created a workplace which is inclusive of people who want to thrive and, in turn, help the growth of customers who are also from very diverse backgrounds. Uh, Modi Care offers an opportunity which is open to everyone, irrespective of caste, color, gender, and uh, religion. So uh, we have a very strong culture which has zero tolerance for posh, and we uphold principles of fairness and equality uh, treatment for all in our organizations. Also, the underlying ethos of Modi Care business opportunity supports uh, women empowerment. So be it our women accountants, uh, or uh, you know, be it our women uh, at office, we have been the trendsetters, and uh, you know, we are always. So, Mr. Bimi, Mr. Bimi, yeah, okay. Yeah, thanks for speaking and sharing your uh, experience. Uh, now, I would like to invite Mr. Binayak Jada, Business HR Partner, Abhi Devi Sir, India Private Limited, winner for uh, Best Employee for PWD in Small Category. Mr. Binayak Jada, please, please cover in within one minute. Okay. Uh, first, I am very happy to receive. Uh, am I audible? Yes, please. Yeah, so I am very happy to receive this award uh, for every donation. Thanks to all the dignitaries, SOHM team, and the members and presidents uh, <clears throat> for this award. So let me narrate a beautiful quote by Arthur Chan: "Diversity is a fact, equity is a choice, inclusion is an action, and belongingness is an outcome." So this initiative was given uh, right from the top uh, management from every donation where we started PWD journey. 
did a feasibility study and we understood that uh, you know from the sensitization program what we had for the shop floor employees and for our managers and leadership like people are not useless but they are helpless so with this we named the project as able plus and currently if you ask me we are having uh, persons with disability at our gurgaon plant we have having in r&d center in pune last month we started in our ho where we have uh, one recruited in finance department couple of more we are going to do that and the plan for 2021 is to induct 20 more or more than that in our gurgaon in our bangalore and pune location so let me tell you this mr vinay and Binay, 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 a long way to go thank you Binay, thanks a lot we will give yeah. another opportunity please uh, mr yeah. suri executive vice president human resource adam in india private limited winner best emperor for women in small category mr pankaj suri mr pankaj suri are you there yeah, yeah. No honourable minister, Sri Ratan Lal ji, Kataria ji, President Association, uh, Sri Vinay Agarwal ji, and respected jury members and other dignitaries. Uh, first of all, I want to thank everyone for giving me the opportunity to be part of today's session on a very important and a timely topic. Uh, at Edelman, we believe that a workforce comprised of employees from all demographics and with diversity in background and experiences can provide innovative and creative solution for our clients. which is central to what we are and who we are thank you everyone to all and for giving us the opportunities and my heartiest congratulations to all the winners thanks sandeep aap mute sandeep you are on mute sandeep sorry sorry so Uh, Miss Tina Birod, head of diversity, equity, uh, and inclusion and social change at Thought Works Technology India Private Limited, winner for in both category for best employer for policy and DNI and woman in medium category. Please, Miss Tina Birod. Yeah, thank you so much, Asu Cham, and everyone involved uh, with the award. We are honored and elated to win the excellence, um, the best employer for policies as well as the best employer for women. At ThoughtWorks, we truly believe that diversity, equity, and inclusion have the power to create transformative social change, and our purpose is to create an extraordinary impact through our culture and technology excellence. Um, I um, also congratulate all our co-winners, and uh, I hope we get the opportunity to work together um, at some point in time. And thank you so much, everyone. Congratulations! Yeah, congratulations to uh, Ms. Tina Menon and your company. and now i would like to invite uh, mr aji uh, aji jo topic capable winner in best emperor for pwd and second runner in gndi in last category mr aji george thanks sandeep uh, thanks uh, as a chairman uh, mr vinay and mr anil thank you so much <clears throat> and also <clears throat> congratulate the co winners uh, it's an amazing opportunity uh, for us to be part of this whole uh, group and quite prestigious uh, award so we on behalf of the pro i'm so thankful for that and i think uh, across we are here because all of us have been on a journey and we have been building that ecosystem and that inclusion culture which has enabled us to grow and i think that's very important for all of us so congratulating everyone and thank you so much uh, for everything thank you thank you easy uh, and again our congratulation to you and your company and your efforts uh so now our, we would like to invite uh, miss gayatri ramamurthy a uh, senior director lead diversity and inclusion and learning head cap gemini india cap gemini winners uh, in both category of uh, for policy on dni and women and also second runner up in pwd in large category so you are uh, awarded in three of category in large please uh, miss gayatri ramamurthy namaste on behalf of cap gemini with great pride and humility i accept this award thank you so much asocham and thank you to the leaders and minister in this session there's perhaps nothing more empowering uh, than feeling that we are seen heard and truly belong irrespective of the sexual uh, orientation or gender the race or any other characteristics uh, cap gemini's diversity and inclusion journey has been challenging so we recognize that it is a journey and not a destination we are proud of the progress we made so far and we realize that there is much more to do together along with many of the leaders present in this call and many more who are not here um, in society and um, and in, in corporate india 
Living to the brand promise, get the future you want, we shall continue to bring to life our purpose of unleashing human energy through technology for a sustainable and inclusive future. Thank you. Conversation uh, to uh, Gayatri ji and uh, Cap Gemini is uh, always outstanding uh, performance in all uh, d and domain. Uh, I request to uh, Benisa, please share your views and to consultation to all winners. And because uh, Edison, Sec IDC Messi and Edison Secretary will join within five to ten minutes, uh, he's in meeting. Uh, till, uh, please uh, share your views. Benisa. I uh, I would like to heartily congratulate all the winners today uh, at this diversity and inclusion excellence awards and conclave. I think it's very heartening to see the work that all of you have put in in uh, in a subject which requires a lot of attention. Uh, it it gets a lot less attention than it deserves, and uh, so I'm very very enthused to see everyone uh, over here today and. Uh, Again, congratulations to everyone. Uh, I think I can keep uh, speaking on, but I think that's not the objective of this uh, conclave. So perhaps we can also get other speakers uh, if uh, Sandeep, uh, or if the uh, secretary is going to be much more later, then maybe we can start the other program and then you can get him on board later on, uh, okay. whatever sure. you and Anilji decide. Okay, fine. Uh, thank you, Vinay sir. Uh, uh, I request to uh, Anil Raspul sir to uh, uh, deliver the vote of thanks to all uh, special winners, please. Anil sir. Uh, it's my proud privilege to, to give vote of thanks uh, to Honorable Minister who came and joined us and shared his perspective as to what all his ministry is doing in the area of diversity and inclusion. Uh, they have uh, major plans and also inviting your SHM to join hands with, uh, with them in taking the agenda forward. Uh, thank you, Minister Saab, for coming and joining us uh, this morning. Uh, it, is, it encourages us and uh, all the organizations who are doing great work in this area. Thank you. Uh, I'd also like to thank uh, President Sucham for joining us, sparing his valuable time and sharing his perspective in this area and, and, and making commitment that Sucham going forward will do more and more in the area of diversity and inclusion. And thank you, President, for coming and joining us. I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank all the winners. Uh, you know, their organizations are doing great job. And I was personally uh, uh, looking into the, the kind of job that each organization is doing. Uh, it is not only people who have won the awards. Uh, it is also people who participated. Each one of them is doing such a wonderful job in this area. Uh, you know, they are actually unsung heroes uh, of our country because not many corporates have come forward in doing what these corporations are doing. So, so my heartfelt congratulations to all those who participated in these awards and also those who made the cut and won the awards. They deserve special uh, thanks from the SHM. I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank my jury members who uh, spent um, a huge amount of time tirelessly evaluating uh, uh, the, the, all the nominations that came. Uh, we had a very, very difficult time in, uh, in, in deciding as to who should be included, who should not be included, um, uh, uh, who has uh, worked on all the parameters who have uh, you know, not worked uh, on some of the parameters, uh, how we have to make um, evaluation on each one of them. So it was a very hard task for us to um, arriving at the winners. Uh, so so um, uh, it was a very big learning experience for me also personally uh, doing this um, uh, work. So. Uh, my, my, my congratulations to all the winners once again. And I'd like to thank um, 
uh, the entire SHM team, which has provided us huge amount of support in reaching to this uh, level. Uh, and um, you know, uh, and I'm sure going forward uh, from the learning of this year, we will uh, we will make these awards even better going forward, and, and see how we can sensitize the corporates to come forward more and more in this area, uh, and 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 bring in an inclusive environment uh, for all those people who deserve attention from the society, so that we have more inclusive society because only uh, it is inclusive society that can actually last if we don't have a sustainable and inclusive society country will have many problems going forward and all of us who are uh, uh, we are more um, uh, uh, what should i say uh, 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 you know who have all the uh, luxuries of life if we don't come and share with all those who deserve more, uh, then we will be the major losers and, and not the and not the society. Because ultimately, society has to has to uh, be there for everybody's uh, sustenance and a long-lasting uh, environment. So I like to thank uh, everyone uh, once again uh, for coming and joining us for this evening. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Anil sir. Uh, thank you, President uh, sir. Uh, and uh, just uh, just like we will provide to other winners uh, speaking opportunity next session. Session will be continue. Yeah, and uh, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Vishal Kedia to uh, lead the next session. Mr. Vishal Kedia. Hi. Uh, good morning, everyone, uh, and uh, congratulations to all the awardees. What I'm going to do is uh, put a context. Like we've been, we looked at all these uh, awards. We basically looked at that leaders play a very important role. Uh, it means as far as implementation of DNI within the organization is concerned, governments definitely can make the law, but unless corporates don't come forward and do their bit, I personally believe that uh, it's impossible for the society to change. Uh, in India, definitely more and more things are being done towards diversity and inclusion, at least from the law perspective. We already know about the uh, law for prevention of sexual harassment of women. We know about the rights of people with disability. But apart from that, if you look at over the last two, three years, there have been several other laws also which have come in. For example, the HIV Act, which came in in 2018, and the Transgender Act, which came in last year, which is also mandatory for all organizations. So in our interaction with various corporates and also while we were doing this uh, evaluation of all these uh, awards, we found that the biggest challenge is also about awareness of these aspects of it. So corporates are not aware that there are laws like this which are mandated to them because of which uh, it's not being uh, implemented. And uh, if you look at from a characteristics of an inclusive leadership, what we found is that visible commitment of the management is the most important thing because if management is not committed and their commitment is not visible to the people at large then obviously people don't feel uh, included as far as the organization is concerned and if we were to look at uh, corporates who walk the talk uh, again two three years back we found that uh, in one of the organizations there was an allegation against the chief diversity officer with regards to uh, uh, a discrimination uh, against a person for his sexual orientation and in that case when this was brought to the uh, notice of the management they immediately inquired into it and when they found they did not even hesitate to uh, terminate the chief diversity officer for doing violations like this apart from that also if you were to look at government is actually providing a lot of incentives to for corporates with regards to uh, implementation so Again, out there, we still believe that a lot of awareness can be done. And again, just to give an example, with regards to people with disability under the RPWD Act, there are in incentives for the private sector to be able to uh, uh, employ more people with disability. For example, out there, for 10 years, government is saying that we will uh, pay for the employer contribution to EPF and ESIS. Similarly, they are saying that for the uh, gratuity payable to people with disability, uh, we will pay one third of their gratuity. So there are so many of these 
programs are there which possibly uh, if people are aware and if management is aware they can do a lot more better also uh, in our experience what we've seen is that corporate communication with respect to diversity and inclusion is also extremely important we've seen at times casually where people when you're referring to people with disability we unknowingly or unknowingly uh, identify them as disabled people now this can be quite inappropriate and offensive as compared to comparing people with disability with uh, other people at times we call them able people or healthy people again out there one can say they are non disabled so there are i think so a lot has to be done with regards to corporate communication also so that people in their organizations i would say even unconsciously do not feel uh, uh, i would say discriminated against uh, yes in the government sector obviously uh, government has made reservations for pwd uh, in the private sector currently is not there and we've seen several organizations doing a lot with regards to prevention of sexual harassment we found that most of the organizations are somewhere on the spectrum they have done a lot in that with regards to pwd our experience has been that yes very few organizations have done it um, again out there awareness not being there and with regards to the other ones like hiv and uh, transgender i think so we have not seen too much of awareness at all and so therefore i believe that asochem uh, with regards to their members at least is doing or trying to do a lot to may educate them with regards to these uh, various laws for diversity and inclusion and because of which we believe that a lot of change can be done uh again what what one can say is with regards to uh, leadership visible commitment is the most important thing apart from that uh, management should also be uh, or the leader should also be aware of their personal biases it could be an unconscious personal bias so they should be uh, aware of it and not only should they be aware of it they should also have humility along with it because if you say okay this is who i am take it or leave it then that doesn't matter one should uh, be aware of their own limitations and also be open to uh, i would say feedback so that they can actually make about a, a proper change so i think these are a few of my thoughts uh, which i wanted to kind of put in the context what leadership role uh, can play in the dni uh, space and now what i will do is um, i will um, for the for providing industry perspective i will uh, invite mr neeraj parihar executive vice president leader insight and data global business line india cap gemini to give to share with us his industry view industry perspective and thereafter um, i will uh, also call other awardees to say a few words mr neeraj parihar yes, thank you and good, good afternoon uh, my warm respect to all the eminent uh, uh, dignitaries here and i'm very proud to be uh, here speaking to all of you uh, i have two roles in capgemini one i am a business leader in insights and data but the role that i'm really proud of is uh, what we call a male champion for diversity and inclusion initiative earlier on we realized that uh, in order for us to advance in the diversity and inclusion the men have to be uh, big allies of that uh, that initiative and i am speaking to you here today as a representation of that as a male champion for dni in capgemini and i am very proud of that now <clears throat> introducing capgemini a little bit to all of you we are a 17 billion euro organization about 2 lakh 70 thousand people across the globe out of which 1 lakh 20 thousand are in india we are very well known for our people strategies and commitment to the to the society uh, we are a european headquartered uh, firm um, and who operate in more than 50 countries and at any given point of time uh, we have uh, people from more than 100 different nationalities working for us and it is this rich cultural diversity that paves the way for all of our diversity uh, and inclusion as well as the csr initiatives a while ago my colleague uh, ms gayatri ramamurthy talked about our purpose statement which is capgemini's purpose is to unleash human energies through technologies for a sustainable and inclusive future 
and therefore the sustainability and inclusiveness is is not just a tokenism or lip service for us but it is in fact our corporate goal and objective for a long term uh, uh, long long term to uh, to come and in the spirit of that uh, sustainability and inclusion we view that space in three large towers uh, one is uh, diversity and inclusion which i'll talk about quite a bit especially focusing on gender diversity uh, we are also uh, doing uh, path breaking work in digital inclusion as well as environment and sustainability when we come to diversity and inclusion uh, we are addressing multiple aspects of uh, diversity and inclusion uh, starting from gender diversity uh, lgbtq to generational di diversity to persons with uh, disabilities but we do believe that a signif significant amount of effort it still needs to be uh, made in the gender diversity first catering to enabling uh, our women colleagues to uh, to stay in their jobs and also grow uh, with with us to that extent a lot of our uh, approaches are based on one or two patterns that we've seen in the industry number one if you look at uh, at the intake level uh, the industry hires roughly about 50% of women and 50% of men uh, but by the time uh, you know they reach the senior management levels the women reduce to 10% of that population which essentially means that from the intake to the highest levels in the organization we are the industry is losing 40% of uh, the qualified workforce this you combine with the fact that uh, men seem to grow much faster and better in the uh, in in the or organization ladder uh, despite the fact that the the women associates tend to be a lot more reliable and uh, uh, and and lot more loyal to the organization tells us that we are dealing with uh, a, a significant amount of uh, of cognitive bias uh, the intentionality uh, of uh, you know women towards their their career equality and enablement we launched uh, winspire as our flagship uh, uh, initiative to address essentially all of it what we are doing there is uh, trying to address the, the 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 gender diversity space in in three aspects um, we, we in intensifying the hiring uh, we are also doing a lot of things to retain our uh, women employees and also develop them to become the future leaders in in our, in our organization when it comes to hiring our best experience uh, of uh, uh, demonstrated experience of really uh, intensifying the hiring was during covid time if you look at uh, you know the the, the analysts what they have said is during covid uh, one of the initiatives that will go to the back burner is the dni initiative but in fact we have done exactly opposite at capgemini we said that we will use that time as an opportunity to consolidate our position in the in the women hires and as a matter of fact in 2020 we uh, we hired historically high number of women women in our organization and much higher number than the men uh, so that was uh, a great accomplishment we had covid also uh, also to taught us that we could be location agnostic with our um, our approaches and we launched a project called sakshi dashikon where we essentially went to the rural areas of uh, of the country to hire capable uh, underprivileged women who otherwise would not have an opportunity to do jobs with us for, for the lack of infrastructure and training as we speak we are hiring close to 600 such uh, women employees to come and join us and be, be part of our journey the other thing that we have done is we have also uh, addressed the uh, the intersectionality by uh, creating a program around inviting back women who uh, for whatever reason had to leave the jobs uh, after a few years of working and now are uh, are available to come back to the organization so this program called captivate uh, where we are welcoming them back uh, we we invite them we uh, we make their skills current and help them easily transition back into the mainstream jobs again a very successful uh, program while we do all of this we also make a uh, tremendous amount of data driven decisions to ensure that if there is a bias in our sourcing processes or interview processes we know it upfront and do the cultural and and subconscious uh, awareness type of 
uh, trainings to make sure that those uh, biases are addressed. When it comes to retention, one of my favorite program is uh, Fair Welcome. Um, you know, the, the, the intersectionality for the women, typically the big event is uh, uh, when they are on their family way and have to decide uh, to, to serve the family or the, uh, or the, or the profession. Um, what we have done is we have essentially, you know, given options uh, for them to be able to do both. Our fair welcome program, uh, you know, creates, uh, provides a generous uh, uh, amount of paid leaves. And not only that, when when women are in that process and after we, we create the buddy system for them to stay current with what's happening in their uh, their teams, their organization, so that when they come back, we easily absorb them back in the in the system. So very popular program. We also launched uh, Flexi uh, working work from home. Uh, and given the COVID experience, uh, we realized that women were getting more and more busier at their homes. And therefore, there was a need uh, to create some very curated roles for the, um, at least on a temporary basis, when they have to pay attention to the, uh, to, to the family, they could get into roles that are a little less demanding, at least till the time uh, they, they, they fulfill their, uh, their, their family commitments. So, and then in addition to that, you know, we're one of the first organizations in India, I believe, who had even 15 years ago, uh, the culture of uh, having, uh, uh, you know, play schools within our campuses so that the working parent parents could uh, leave their uh, children in the same offices and, and meet them uh, throughout the day. And the women don't have to leave jobs for that. So, so the retention has been quite powerful. On the development, it's a top uh, driven, um, uh, driven approach. Uh, we run a very uh, powerful sponsorship program where all the senior leaders in Capgemini India uh, are sponsoring one or two women uh, associates from different uh, uh, grades within the, within the company and essentially making sure that they get to vice president uh, levels. Uh, and in fact, even as I speak, uh, there are close to 40 such women associates who are on their ways to become vice presidents with us. And I'm keenly looking forward to uh, that, that outcome. So as you see, um, what we have done in the in the DNI space, and especially in the gender diversity space, is a very well-rounded, uh, very thought-out approach. Uh, we are, we have gone, you know, way beyond uh, the tokenism of this uh, uh, this, and have meant what we want to do, and have you know constantly enriched our approaches and learned from our experience. It is this reason because of which we have been constantly getting uh, a number of recognitions. Uh, we were awarded from uh, from UN uh, Asia Pact to Avta to uh, to jobs for her. The, the the recognitions just pouring in, and I would like to thank Asocham today for once again recognizing us for the phenomenal work uh, my team is doing, Capgemini is doing in this uh, space. Now I can you know take all the credit of the leadership direction and the policies we are making, but in reality the real winners are the women at Capgemini who have done tremendous work in giving their hard work, uh, keeping their intention of their prof professional uh, profession careers uh, intact and made us better. It is because of them, uh, we are today a lot more innovative company. We are today a lot more appealing company. Uh, our policies are a lot more refined because of the diverse perspectives they're bringing to us at different levels, as well as their, our risks are uh, a lot more mitigated because of uh, their presence. So I, I congratulate all of them for doing a fantastic job for us and for the industry. And I do hope that uh, the journey that we have started becomes a big moment uh, for a beautiful country to, uh, to, to get into a, uh, an, an equal space which all of us, our fellow human beings uh, deserve. Thank you so much. And thank you, Neeraj, for giving the industry perspective. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to invite all the uh, balance awardees to kind of share their experience to, on this DNI journey. Uh, and please keep it within two minutes, each of y'all. So first, I will invite uh, Mr. Ashwini Saxena, CEO of JSW Foundation. They are the second runner-up for best employee for policy on DNI in the small category. Mr. Saxena. Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for giving us this opportunity to share our thoughts. Um, 
it's very heartening to see that jw shakti which is a very new uh, kid on the block i would say uh, has been uh, conferred this award uh, jw shakti itself has come uh, on the uh, come up as an institution on the basis of a long run work that we've done as jw foundation uh, in in a very remote area of palari district which has now become recently vijayanagar district uh where women had very limited number of options in terms of livelihoods and one of them also happened to be at some point of time devdasi pratha so from there doing women empowerment bringing women out of that fold and giving them a lot of i would say respectable options for taking jobs i think that has been the journey which has culminated into the formation of this section 8 foundation called jsw shakti and jsw shakti is now growing bigger and bigger with every passing day uh bringing under its fold all women livelihood opportunities all women empowerment programs and making sure that the women uh, from the north south and east west of the country are all under one fold which is jw shakti uh, one of the most prestigious programs that we been running under jw shakti uh, has been the rural bpos uh, and it's heartening to see how women who are at west 12th standard pass are able to you know uh, do e publishing work and are able to do a lot of bpo works which a uh, big uh, you know mainstream i would say mainstream uh, bbo organizations would be doing in some tier 1 or tier 2 city and you're talking about women uh, to the strength of about 2500 odd women working in some of the very remote areas of india uh, all plugged in together as members of jsw shakti uh, working on rural bpos uh, in very remote parts of the country so i think that's the passion with which we are trying to nurture just jsw shakti uh the, the backing is there obviously from jsw foundation and jsw as a group which is a very diversified uh, and very sensitive group in terms of its corporate responsibilities and uh, social uh, sensitivities so we look forward to have more interactions with all of you see how we can you know build synergies with the work that we are doing uh we would be very happy to scale up and partner and collaborate with organizations and uh, i wish all the best to everyone who's been there uh, since morning on this platform uh, would like to remain in touch with all of them thank you so much thank you ashwini uh, i think so uh, uh, shri ashish shivastav ji has uh, joined us shri ashish shivastav ji additional secretary ministry of women and child development government of india sir uh, if you can address uh, the audience thank you uh good morning uh, it's a it's a pleasure to be uh, joining uh, the entire elite gathering today and uh, um the the area where we are uh, together deliberating and recognizing the efforts uh, which have been made by industry and uh, by industry and uh, entrepreneurial initiative in the country i think this is highly relevant because uh, uh, you know we all know that uh, participation and full participation of uh, the uh, of women in economic activity is absolutely very very highly important for two basic reasons one of course uh, they constitute half the population of the country so their participation is uh, absolutely quintessential for that and secondly uh, we have to remember that uh, it's when the women uh, participate fully and actively and with the full bandwidth and opportunity and uh, you know uh, facilitation or rather you know uh, if i don't use the word facilitation with full possibilities of no hindrance and no adverse uh, you know factors playing against their participation in economic activity in the country and in the world it's only then that the other uh, half of uh, our uh, humanity which is the male half if we say you know or the other gender they will be able to really uh, take the required buoyancy to uh, you know and the econo- and the economy and uh, the entire social and economic and political activity will be able to really gather and gain the required buoyancy to uh, really flourish so we have to fully fully internalize uh, this entire uh, essential premise for us to really uh, settle into the realm of being a, uh, being a healthy civilization 
and uh, being a, a vibrant economy and society and culture. So uh, as far as India is concerned, uh, we know that uh, the female labor force participation rate in the country has dropped over the past 50 years or so. And uh, though there has been a very, very marginal increase between 1718 and 1819, yet irrespective of that very decimal uh, kind of an increase, the, uh, the situation is not good. Uh, if we look uh, at the global uh, gender gap index of, uh, of course, we know about the Brisbane target, which is 25 by 25 and, you know, increasing globally about 100 million women into the workforce. By 2025, uh, if we look at the gender gap index of the World Economic Forum, you see our uh, position dropped from 98 in 2006 to 112 in uh, 2020. Uh, together and especially with the with SHM and industry associations and individual industries and you know commercial enterprise, we have to really really you know ponder seriously on this, and uh, you know to uh, actually. <laughs> So uh, here, if we go into the global gender gap index of the World Economic Forum and our ranking therein, uh, and if we start looking at what happened uh, from uh, in 2006 and what our uh, standing is in 2020. So whereas in 2006, as I just said, our rank was 98 and uh, in 2020, it's 112. Uh, if we look at the, uh, you know, uh, the sub parameters within this index, the one of the main important uh, you know parameter in this which is about economic participation and opportunity in 2006 whereas our rank was 110 now in 2020 our rank was 149 so we've done a good job on you know getting pulled down or you know falling down of course there are the areas like educational attainment health and survival political empowerment only in political empowerment, we moved two ranks up from 20 to 18 in health and survival and education, we've had a drop. If we go further down into the sub parameters of uh, the parameter pertaining to economic participation and opportunity, uh, where our rank is 149 and our score is 0.354 against an average score of 0.582. If we go into, you know, the constituent parameters, the main constituent parameters of this indicator. Uh, if we look at the labor force participation rate, there our rank is 145 and our score is 0 0.304 against a global average of 0 0.661. If we look at wage equality for similar work, then our rank is 117. Our score is 0.555 against an average, a global average of 0.613. Estimated earned income in thousands of dollars. Our rank is 144 and our score is 0.206 against an average of 0.499. That is about 0.5, we are at 0.2. Uh, senior officials and managers and legislators. Our rank is 136, our score is 0.158 against a global average of 0.356. Professionals and technical workers. Our rank is 132. Our score is 0.434 against a global average of 0.756. So these are all sub parameters into the index of economic participation and opportunity, which is uh, one of the key parameters feeding into the global gender gap index of the World Economic Forum. Our status as on 2020. And uh, as I just tried to put across our averages, we, we are definitely well below average in all the constituent indicators and parameters there. So we definitely need to be giving it a good thought and uh, giving it a good uh, response in clear, you know, outcome oriented output and outcome oriented terms. Uh, we all know 
that uh, women and girls and children and uh, the other marginalized sections of society, they tend to be uh, more uh, disproportionately impacted by any calamity or, you know, for that matter, any kind of calamity, be it natural, be it man-made or be it otherwise. Be it natural or man-made, that suffices. So in the context of COVID, women have had to face a disproportionate burden and uh, that has exacerbated the possibilities of their entering and uh, remaining retained in the uh, workforce, in the labor market, as well as in positions across the vertical uh, spectrum, which I would say includes uh, positions at uh, the managerial and the board level, and also at, at the uh, you know brown and blue collar level uh, activity. So, uh, of course, there are gender stereotypes which uh, are strong, which are standing, and we need to be able to uh, properly continue to improve our way to be able to respond to them, including, uh, you know, being able to bring in effect cultural shifts. There are issues relating to pay gaps across gender, gender pay gap. And uh, there's a need to have stronger monitoring tools and uh, monitoring tools so that we are able to capture what uh, are the results and what are the what are the outputs which are the activities and what are the outcomes which are the results of our activities so you know at the outset uh, i think uh, this uh, this would be uh, relevant for us to uh, understand and to keep remembering that uh, there is never going to be, at least in the near future, uh, we don't see that uh, what we have done is enough. Of course, we are doing a lot. And uh, the very fact that we are able to identify excellent achievers who we can uh, consider for conferring awards, that's in itself uh, a proof that uh, we are aware of, uh, the, of the realities in this context and that we need to be, uh, and, and that we are working in response to the challenges which are there culturally, socially, economically, and all the ways. One thing more which I missed in the middle was about care economy. Uh, women uh, spend five plus hours, you know, somewhere in the, uh, in doing non-paid uh, uh, seven and a half hours in non-paid uh, activity as compared to five and a half hours, you know, so those, uh, that kind of statistics is also there. And we need to be able to uh, factor in, you know, uh, all the related aspects of the care economy because that uh, feeds into the possibilities of uh, better and greater economic activity overall and sharing of the care burden which uh, women bear disproportionately higher. So given all these, uh, you know, baseline uh, facts and, uh, you know, some of the studies and indicators and, in uh, and indices, which are, uh, I talked of one of the indices, which is the Global Gender Gap Index of the World Economic Forum, into the details of that. But uh, the fact remains that uh, we, the reality is standing in front of our eyes and uh, we need to be able to remember and to be able to continually respond to it in better and better <coughs> every day, every hour and every moment. And uh, together we have to do this and uh, be able to bring about the change which we aspire and dream for in the least, least possible time. So uh, I think that's uh, all that I would want to say at this time. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Shivastav for uh, sharing your views on a lot which India needs to do with regards to gender diversity and gender gap. Thank you so much for your views. Uh, definitely, I think it will encourage the corporate world to do a lot more than what they are already doing right now. Again, uh, next, I would like to uh, call upon Mr. Dharial. Uh, he was actually going to speak towards the end, but I think so he has to also go for a meeting. He's a consultant with Niti Aayog, and he is the uh, former state commissioner uh, for person with disability, uh, state of uh, Delhi. So I would request uh, Mr. Dharial to share his views with us. Mr. Dharial. Okay. 
Okay. Am I audible? Yeah, you are audible. I, your video, your uh, in the video is not on. Uh, I, I, it's not on. It's on. Namaskar, Namaskar, everybody. Uh, thank you, SOCM, uh, Mr. Anil Rajput and his team uh, for thinking about uh, this kind of program, uh, the Diversity and Inclusion Excellence Awards. It's a great idea. Uh, no other, uh, perhaps, industry chamber has thought about it. And therefore, it's a big congratulation. This is the second award, second year we are uh, in here. Uh, I also thank all the participating companies uh, who have uh, decided, who have thought about it, who tried to know about it. Uh, so this is the beginning itself is a great initiator, uh, great initiative. And I'm sure uh, with this, it is, as somebody said, it is only journey, not a destination. Destination is, of course, for all of us, very far. And uh, even if we have done very little in the area of diversity and inclusion, and if we continue to do it, we'll definitely do reach the greater heights. I'm very, very sure about that. One very important thing that I observed during the last few years, uh, the jury members, other than me, who uh, comes from the disability sector, have pitched in for inclusion, for inclusion of people with disabilities more forcefully and fiercely than I. Like Michelle, like Anilji last time, we said, no, no, we need to do a lot. We haven't done enough for people with disabilities for inclusion in the industry. And therefore, unless people, unless companies have done it so well, we we must have another meeting. We deliberated. That is why he was repeatedly saying that it was very difficult for us to arrive at a conclusion which should be which company should be first, second, third, or even should be there or not. So there is no doubt that we have to do a lot, not only the private companies, but also the government, where there is a provision for 5% reservation uh, of vacancies in education institutions. But then I'm very happy to note during these two years, particularly this year, that despite there not being any obligation on the part of uh, the, the, the companies from the legislation, they many of them are doing very well. Many of them have created so much of uh, infrastructure, accessible infrastructure, and then uh, created accommodations, reasonable accommodations that we call. So this is, this all of us know that unless we include people with disabilities in our workforce, in our society, everywhere, whatever we do, we cannot have an inclusive society. We cannot, we cannot keep our promise that no one will be left behind in sustainable development goals. By 2020, 2030, we need to include everyone. And there, uh, 11 times, 11 times, the persons with disabilities have been mentioned explicitly in the agenda. So therefore, we have to remind us time and again that it is our duty, not only because there is an obligation by legislation, but also our duty to ensure that we have an inclusive society, we ensure that the people with disabilities are not only the receivers of the doles, receivers of charity, but they are contributors, active contributors to the economy and the nation building. And the companies can do a great deal, can help them to assist, assist them to contribute to the nation building by uh, the, the, the people with disabilities. Unki bhagi dari huna bho jaruri hai. Us bhagi dari mein hum logon ko ikatta huna, the companies ko ikatta huna, pura ek samaj mein unka samavish karna bohuti awashyak hai. What I think is that unless 
uh, unless uh, we are aware what Mr. Kedia said, that many of the companies are not aware about the, what the legislation is. For example, we say inclusion. Uh, we need to have awareness. We need to have access. Many people with disabilities, many companies are not able to employ people with disabilities because there is no access. Access to physical environment, access to information and communication technologies and the ecosystem. And then we are not able to give them proper opportunity. They are not able to take that opportunity. We are not able to give that opportunity. So therefore, these two things are very important, accessibility and then awareness. And uh, 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 in fact, we are um, uh, assessing uh, our um, uh, schemes of the Department of Empowerment of Persons with Disabilities, particularly the accessibility, accessible India part of it. So there is a lot needs to be done, even in the government. Uh, organizations. There are many companies who have been excellent. And given an opportunity, I give you an example of an uh, officer. His name is Rigjan Semfil. Rigjan Semfil is clear, you know, cleared the civil service examination in 2003 examination batch. People said uh, he's a person with disability. He people said he cannot uh, be suitable for a job. Uh, uh, of an IS officer, and therefore he was given some other service from Masuri. He rang me up. So this is the condition. I said, I want to file a complaint. The fear in his mind was the service that he is getting, uh, he was getting at that time, may not get. There may be so many, uh, you know, uh, roadblocks to him. I said, no, no. Then later on, after some struggle, a lot of struggle, and also the initiative and the intervention from the PMO. That gentleman became an IS officer, was given an IS officer. He became, uh, he was given UP cadre and he was district magistrate in a number of uh, districts and everywhere he went as a district magistrate created history. And I used to read in the India, in, uh, uh, India Today uh, almost uh, uh, six months, every six months, one story, one new initiative, small initiative, but life changing initiative for the citizens. That is what they can do. I have another the, that, that kind of number of stories and then the IS officer in uh, in in, in uh, Madhya Pradesh with blindness. So so if you give them, give them opportunity, you will see the change. You cannot imagine what they can do. Can you imagine that a person without both arms in Gujarat is a tailor? He does everything. So we need to give them opportunity. Given the and. If the companies do that, nothing like that. I and mean, that is, you need to be seen. You need to be seen. And then, of course, in the hierarchy ladder, uh, they, 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 they must be given that opportunity also to uh, head the organization. They can head the organization. There are people. Uh, they, at the same time, we have to ensure that their productivity, we do not do it charity. We do not do just charity. We need to ensure that their productivity is also reasonable. It is only if they have they contribute to the company's productivity will they feel dignified. Otherwise, giving them only salary, allowing them to come to office or not come to office is not enough. That is that is playing with their dignity. We need to empower them. We need to create that ecosystem. We need to train them. We need to provide them the aids and appliances that they need so that their productivity, if not equal, if not more, then is not less than equal than others. That's what I have to say. And once more, I thank you. Thank Associam and every one of you, all the winners, Winners as well as the participants. I must say, those who found out that there is a there is a there is a uh, program like this of so, so and they came forward. That itself is a great initiator, and I see a lot of hope in it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Laryalji. Thank you for your uh, advice on an ongoing basis with regards to implementation of uh, the law with regards to people with disability. Now we'll go back to the winners so that they can actually uh, share their experiences. 
So I would like to call upon uh, Ms. Rama Kirloska, Director, Kirloska Brothers Limited. Uh, they are the second runner-up for the best employer for women in the small category. Ms. Kirloska. Good morning, everyone. I'm honored to be addressing this August audience today. On behalf of Kirloska Brothers Limited, I take this opportunity to express immense gratitude for conferring the ASOCHA Diversity and Inclusion Excellence Award under the Best Employer for Women category. At Kirloska Brothers, we have always believed in setting newer trends, which have over the years become milestones for the industry at large. Diversity and inclusion are values that define KBL's workplace culture. And the company has a legacy of being ahead of the curve in building an equal opportunity workforce. KBL has been at the forefront of contributing towards causes that promote gender equality. In fact, the organization has always propagated and been widely regarded for its all-inclusive work culture. The inception of our all-women plant at Kanur near Coimbatore in Tamil Nadu has been a further step in the same direction. We started this plant in 2011, and uh, it has been one of our most productive plants, producing one pump every 17 seconds. We employ around 180 women between the ages of 20 and 35, who were all eighth grade dropouts. And we uh, ensured that they received extensive shop floor training for around six months. And uh, other than just employment, it has brought about a huge social change in this area. This village where we set up our women's facility um, had a history of child marriage. Girls were seen as a burden on the family. However, after we have employed these women and they transformed them into breadwinners for their families, uh, their families are reluctant to marry them off. In fact, um, today our women not only stay with us after marriage, uh, many of them have also relocated their husbands to Kanyur. So I believe that this inclusion is one of the keys to our success. And it may be one reason why our forward thinking organization remains in existence for more than 100 years. We would, con we would continue to support ideas that promote overall growth and progress with utmost zeal. And it feels great to be recognized and motivates us to go a step further. This award is dedicated to every member of the KBL family who has helped us reach where we stand today. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rama, for sharing your experience. Now I would like to call uh, Ms. Karima Pan. She is Lead Rewards Digitization and uh, HR Business Partner at Sony Pictures Network. Ms. Pan. Yeah. Hi. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much to this esteemed audience. Uh, at Sony Pictures Networks, for us, uh, DEI, uh, as we call it, diversity, equity, and inclusion, has been a journey uh, of multi-years. Uh, we have a philosophy of bring your own self on what we call as BYOS. And in this philosophy, we primarily look at four pillars. The first being uh, building gender diversity. Uh, while yes, women form 50% of the workforce, so that needs special mention and uh, ensuring that we have the right set of things so that women do not drop off. Uh, but I'd like to share some initiatives which stand out for us. Uh, we do something known as live your dream. Uh, this is keeping in mind imposter syndrome that women have. And here we ask for ideas, entrepreneurial ideas from our employees, uh, which we are ready to fund. So, so that's something which stands out for us and gets a, a lot of ovation from our uh, women employees. The second most important thing that we feel and we, uh, where we feel that we have a larger play as a media and entertainment organization is through our content because we reach over 700 million households. So inclusion as a narrative for content is something which is very critical for us. Uh, where we look at unstereotyped content, we bring about issues uh, in our shows uh, which otherwise are not talked about or bringing normality around those. So, so talking about things which could be as basic as menstrual hygiene to things which are about domestic violence, however, this time not on women, but on men. So how do we look at inclusion coming through our content? That's another big thing. Uh, and we feel that we have to be very responsible as an entertainment company around that. The other big element which we feel while we look at uh, diversity and getting more people is uh, how do we optimize cognitive thinking and sensitize our people? 
Uh, so like it was mentioned earlier, we have uh, something known as Breaking Barriers, a, a program where we invite individuals who've excelled uh, uh, across industries uh, and could be either persons of, uh, with disability or members of the LGBT plus community. They come, share their ideas and break myths and stereotypes that exist in our people, which make them more inclusive. So we had uh, the IS officer Ira Singhal come talk to us and give an inspirational uh, talk. Similarly, we have Raga De Silva, who is part of our DNI Apex Council, and she's a member of the LGBT plus community. So these are things which give us a holistic uh, view on how we look at uh, DEI. And uh, that's just uh, about it. We are uh, uh, into the journey and we hope that we improve year on year. Uh, a very big thank you to ASOCHAM for this recognition, and I'm sure we will do much more in the years to come. Thank you. Thank you, Karima. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, so this was Sony Picture Network. They are the second runner-up for the best employer for policy on DNI and the best employer for women in the medium category. Uh, now, next, I'll call uh, Mr. Panish Rao. He's the Chief People Officer at Mindtree. Mindtree and Standard Charter are sharing the second runner up for the best employer for women in the large category. Again, I'll request everyone to keep it to about one and a half, two minutes. Thank you so much. Mr. Ram. Thank you. Uh, greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Firstly, heartfelt gratitude to Associated Chamber of Commerce and Industry of India for conferring this honor on Mindtree. This is a testimony to what we are doing and confirms that we are on the right path while there is still miles to go for us. DNI to Maitri is as important as financial performance. This being, we are never at rest and always attempt to do more. We are adding differently able, and I heard Mr. Daryal with great interest, and I'm sure I will be happy to know that we are adding differently able to our portfolio of DNI and uh, hope to make our little contribution to the society with their inclusion in our workforce. This award for best employer for women in the large large business categories dedicated to all our lady minds and mind tree for making us so proud. Thank you once again for this honor. Thank you, Mr. Rao. Uh, now I'll next call upon Mr. Sanjay Gurjar, uh, Managing Director and Head of FI India and South Asia, Standard Charter uh, India. They are the second runner up uh, for the best employer for women in the large category. Sanjay. Yeah, hi. Vishal, uh, am I audible? Yeah, you are. Great. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, uh, we at Standard Charter Bank uh, humbly accept this award. Uh, thank you so much to ASOCHAM and the jury for recognizing our efforts. Uh, at Standard Charter, of course, we're very passionate about how our entire DNI approach. And what we are really looking at is in terms of connecting ourselves to colleagues, clients, and communities, engaging, developing, and retaining diverse talent, making our bank the best place to work delivering products and services that make us the best place to bank and investing in our communities to help them prosper. So how we go about achieving these key objectives, it's we really focus on five diversity pillars. Uh, one, giant gender, nationality and ethnicity, disability, generations, and last but not the least, sexual orientation. Now central to driving this entire DNA agenda in Stanshaw is our diversity and inclusion council. So this council is made up of senior leaders from businesses, regions, and functions, and is chaired by our country CEO, Ms. Zareen Daruwala, who herself has been a huge advocate for diversity and inclusion. Now, this council is responsible for overseeing the development and implementation of the bank's DNI strategy, providing strategic direction, and monitoring progress as we seamlessly execute those plans throughout the rest of the organization. We are very enthused with ASOCHAM's efforts to appreciate, highlight, and encourage work in the DNI field. This is a great initiative, and we look forward to continue being closely associated with it. Thank you again. Thank you so much. Bring your experience. Next, I will uh, request Mr. Anurag Verma, Vice President HR, Unifor Software Systems Private Limited, uh, to share their experience. They are the first run up for the best employer for policies on DNA in the small category. Mr. Thanks. Verma. Thanks, uh, Thanks. Uh, Vishal. Good morning, uh, everyone. And uh, on behalf of uh, the management, the senior leadership of Unifor and all the people 
uh, across the globe we most humbly uh, accept this we are uh, a growing company uh, a company which is started and incubated uh, in iit madras india uh, now building products for the world so we are today 300 plus people present across america india and uh, different parts of the globe and for us uh, this is very core to us we believe in one big family and and a family wherein we have equal opportunities for all respect for all and most importantly create a very vibrant inclusive diverse workforce uh, we we are uh, on the path towards this journey currently in this 300 people we have around 35 percent women and most importantly around 30 uh, percent women and cxo level positions we are not happy with this the destination is bigger we want to create more diversity and more better policies practices and most importantly a very deep culture of a family which will embrace all as they are unique individuals we look forward to all the great insights of the industry leaders uh, and uh, shm for uh, you know the best practices which can help us build further on on this journey once again thanks a lot a lot of gratitude to all thank you thank you anurag uh, for sharing your experience uh, next i will call uh, mr ashok navel he is the founder for bisol india services private limited they are the first runner up for the best employer for pwd in the small category mr navel Thanks to all of you, and really I appreciate the Asocham's. This is the, the to give the award of excellence in award and include for diversity and inclusion. The subject matter which was said as a physical disabilities, but I will say my experience from my childhood because I'm seventy two percent physically disabled, and I started this company. And I feel that it is the disabled should be said as the specially able, because those specially able persons have got the determination, work consistently, and wherever the disabilities, whether by the timing or whether by the physical disabilities, we have to definitely respect those, because that is the with all that persistent mind, with the consistency, with the determination to succeed, organization always succeed, and that is the reason. As a value system of our soul, we always give the preference to the disabled person as well as women. I am proud to say that in my organization, a middle and top level management, you can say it is with the majority, it is managed by the disabled as well as the women. And that is the reason I say my company is growing every year growth rate is substantially maintained. Even in the COVID period, we could do a lot of innovative minds with a lot of things we could introduce in our company. And those best practices we embed to our clients also. And that is the reason we contribute a little bit as a squirrel's role. But nonetheless, uh, building the confidence in disabled as well as women enterprise. I dedicate this award to those disabled and employees of my company as well as across whosoever is working for them. Thank you and I'm honored and I'm grateful to the Asocha for giving me the award. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Naval. Next, I will request Ms. Anita Rao, Manager Corporate Communication, Ambe India Enterprises Private Limited uh, to share their experience. They're the first runner-up for the best employee for women in small categories. Ms. Rao. Uh, thank you, Michelle. Am I audible? Yeah, you are audible. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Uh, on behalf of Amway India, myself, one of the proud members of the DNI, DNI Council at Amway, would like to take this opportunity to thank SOCHAM for awarding us with the best employer for women in the small category at the second edition of SOCHAM DNI Excellence Awards. It's truly, truly an honor to be recognized for our efforts in supporting and empowering women workforce in the organization. We firmly believe that the advancement of women is crucial for the success of company and hence we have made conscious efforts to promote diversity and inclusion at Amway. 
There are several initiatives that we have taken to accelerate the growth of our women employees, which includes the leadership programs, policies supporting the work-life balance while ensuring the utmost safety at the workplace. Be it implementation of the POSH uh, policy at work or the series of highly engaging wellness program to help prioritize women uh, health in addition to their work and personal responsibilities. Some of the other initiatives are uh, supporting uh, employees, uh, women employees in particular during different life stages, be it flexi working, telecommunity, uh, uh, sorry, telecommuting, on site crash at corporate and um, uh, manufacturing facility are some of the policies that we feel that encourages mothers to resume the corporate career. Uh, I would, uh, of the many uh, women-friendly HR policies that we have, I would definitely want to call out uh, one of these unique and transformational talent development initiative, which is called as Shadow Board, which has been a tremendous success for us, which has actually enabled women to be promoted in key roles and positions. This award is a testimony to the efforts that our organization Amway has put in towards building a diverse and inclusive environment. This also encourages us to continue working towards the betterment of the working culture of women while empowering them. Thank you once again. I would also like to congratulate all the participants as well as uh, our co-winners here today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Vishal. Thanks. Thank you, Rita. Uh, next, I'll call uh, Ms. Seema Gupta. She is Director HR for Conviva Technologies Limited. They are the first runner-up for the best employee for policy on DNI in the medium category. Ms. Gupta. Thank you. And to such diverse perspectives. See, my voice is breaking. Um, No, we can't hear you. Uh, no. Maybe if you can try to switch off the video, uh, like the video and just talk, then maybe. Am I audible now? Yeah. Am I audible? Yeah, you're audible now. Okay. Um. So I was just saying that. Uh, India's uh, standing uh, World Economic Forum global. There's so much that has been done. There's much more that has to be done. Um, so at Comviva, uh, we are a global pair of solutions. Uh, we're part of the Mahindra group. And, uh, you know, one out of every four people across the globe would experience our products and services in one way or the other. And we have a presence across 95 countries which necessitates us to look at DNI very closely. And at the same time, pride ourselves in being equal opportunity buyer. Uh, so if you get it, we uh, make sure that our environment which we uh, specifically introduced was to enable transitioning of support to motherhood. Um, so before 20, 2014, we figured that a lot of uh, women colleagues were requesting for extension of maternity breaks as well as, uh, uh, you know, wanting to take a career break in order to take care of their children. And, uh, uh, you know, one proactive measure we introduced in 2014 was to, uh, uh, you know, introduce this nanny charges which were offered for all our people uh, having children up to two years of age. They could claim uh, on a monthly basis uh, without having to produce any receipts and uh, born this, this charge of nanny being bought by Comviva directly. So this resulted in about 50% reduction in uh, uh, you know, our request for extension of maternity break, as well as continuity of our women colleagues to come back to work post uh, uh, maternity. 
uh, further having a crash facility at work uh, at a subsidized rate allows our people to uh, you know enjoy the benefit of uh, 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 saving up to 62 percent of uh, uh, the cost of uh, a crash outside crash outside and as part of our csr we own a compassion center which is for uh, uh, you know working with the underprivileged children but this year, we extended the center to provide vocational support to our community women and, uh, you know, we, we, we tried to get them employed thereafter. So the whole focus was to extend the support uh, from uh, children on to women and being able to give back to the community. Apart from that, we make sure that our female employees are uh, part of any new policy or uh, uh, any amendment to an existing policy in the organization. Uh, from inclusion perspective, I think particularly in the last uh, a few months of lockdown, uh, we've definitely made sure that our families of people are uh, part of our celebrations, recognitions, and uh, we truly have been commending them for uh, supporting in allowing for a work from home uh, a seamless experience. And at the same time, our employee assistance program, we extended it globally across, uh, uh, you know, 94 countries to make sure that emotional well-being and stress levels are uh, adequately met for people through their one-on-one -on -one counseling and other help with the uh, uh, external uh, counselors. So this has tremendously helped uh, uh, us in uh, uh, partnering with our people to, uh, you know, appear uh, more uh, uh, diverse in our approach and uh, uh, the fact that today we are here, it's uh, just a testimony to all the efforts that the organization has made in this direction. So thank you very much. Vishali, you on mute. mute. Yeah. My apologies. Uh, thank you, Seema. Uh, I would next uh, invite Ms. Preeti Arora. She's Senior Director with Crystal Limited. They're the first runner-up for the best employer for women in the medium category, Ms. Arora. Thank you. Thank you, Vishal. And first of all, thanks so much to Asosham and judges for this recognition on for inviting us to this privileged forum. It was very nice and wonderful to hear uh, everybody talk about their own experiences uh, in this forum. And I think, like many of us have mentioned, I think for Crystal as well, the agenda for diversity, equity, and inclusion has been very core for us for many years. And I think that stems from the fact and the belief that, you know, diverse teams are not just any more good to have, but they definitely lead to high performance and they make true business sense for all of us. And for us, our work has been around three areas. One is how do we create the right policies and enablement? How do we create the right environment and culture? And how do we approach DNI with the right approach as well as the mindset? And you know, for us, the foundation has been the thought process that how do we make people thrive and bring their whole self to work and contribute to the best of their potential, irrespective of their race, their gender, their background, their special abilities, caste, religion. And so I think maybe I could just very briefly share in 2020 a few things we did. One was we focused on hiring women. So we had very specific women development programs. We also launched a program called Mama Mia, which was to support the pre and post maternity and just, just not for the women, but the managers as well. We also launched a, a, a women career development program for the mid-career stages because that's where we always get challenged by the leaky bucket. We included the same gender, same sex gender in our medical insurance to recognize that. And also our social and responsibility efforts have extended the transparency program that uh, Crystal has for over two lakh rural women. And I think these are so important because they are, you know, helping us learn from each other and make progress. So I just want to take this opportunity to thank the other winners for the passion towards this very important agenda. And thank you once again, as for encouraging us to these forums. Uh, oh, back to you. Thanks, Preeti. Uh, next, I will uh, invite Ms. Vaishali Pathak. She is Global Head Technical learning services and head diversity and inclusion at Tech Mahindra. They are the first runner up for the best employer for policy on DNI in the large category. Ms. Patak. Hi, good afternoon. And it's a great honor and privilege to uh, receive this award. And I would uh, also like to congratulate all the winners because while I'm hearing um, everyone speaking about what differently is being done, but we all can see that the commitment and passion everybody is really 
uh, having to make diversity and inclusion as one of the key agenda uh, for the world, I would say not only the organizations, but that's how I think we are all joining hands to make it possible. So uh, when I talk about Tech Mahindra, like I would say that we are intentionally diverse and naturally inclusive because again, spread across 90 plus countries and people with 125 plus nationalities serving around 1000 customers. Uh, diversity is very natural to us. Like it, it's just one of the enablers for us, for the business, as well as for our own associates development and growth. So uh, we definitely uh, have multiple streams of diversity in what we work. So gender is definitely the one. Apart from gender, uh, generation diversity, and when I say generation diversity, it's not only um, the human, but even the humanoids. Like we have our own bot, K2, uh, which works with us, and uh, also uh, the bots like UO and all. So it's, it's about the co working of human and robots. That's what we call it as generation diversity. Uh, some of the programs I would like to highlight over here is that reverse mentoring. Like we have the younger folks mentoring, uh, even the CXOs in some of the uh, coming areas. So that's reverse mentoring. Almost 5,000 people are part of that reverse mentoring program where the younger generation is uh, teaching us a lot more things. And then there are programs like Chrysalis, which are for top 300 leaders. Um, to ensure that they are on the growth path. When we talk about uh, gender, we don't call it as uh, men, women, but we uh, measure the gender in three categories, like men, women, and um, others or transgender. So uh, though it's very optional for people to declare uh, their sexual orientation, but still uh, a lot of programs are being undertaken for LGBTQ. Uh, in fact, we are amongst uh, first to announce the sex reassignment surgery policy, plus the insurance coverage for the same-sex partners and paternity leave for uh, same-sex transition leaves and all that. There are LGBTQ communities who are very active uh, in the organization. And um, as uh, Nihir mentioned about the main champion, actually we are also getting a lot of champions who are non-LGBTQ but working for that. Uh, as far as women are concerned, like um, right environment, right enablement, and empowerment, I think these are the three things. So environment in terms of the infrastructure, like in campus crash or tire pit some crash, uh, necessary policies of flexi work, security and safety, and um, proper commute um, help and all that. Those form the policies. As far as the enablement and empowerment is concerned, the right opportunities for women uh, and right skilling, making them ready for the new roles. And once they are done, how can we really deploy them into these leadership roles? In fact, uh, Tekem board has now 30% of women, which we were earlier 10%. We, we have 30% women in our board. So uh, these are some of the things as far as the gender and generation is concerned. PWP, we work very closely with Tech Mahindra Foundation. We run the programs in ensuring that the people with disability are getting the deployment training and uh, they get into the mainstream. I think that is one of the key agenda. And there we are working with some of our customers like Google, wherein we are having certain projects where these people uh, with uh, different abilities are um, deployed. And here we also talk about neurodiversity and all types of special abilities. So uh, that's something we are focusing on PWDs. Of course, culture is one part wherein we are having diverse culture with uh, diverse nationalities are there and ensure that uh, all the cultures are respected and uh, that's how people work together. So this is a natural, I would say, uh, this is our commitment uh, to diversity and uh, we can continue. Thank you. Thank you, Vaishali, uh, for sharing your experience. Next, I will uh, request Mr. Parveen Khan, Khan uh, 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 Group Communication and CSR, CSR. Uh, Minda Corporation, Corporation, to share their experience for, experience for, the, for, for the best employee for people in the country. Thank you, Vishwanji. Namaskar. I represent Minda Corporation Limited, uh, which is an automotive component uh, manufacturing company. 
Uh, it has 33 facilities, including India, Vietnam, uh, Indonesia, Uzbekistan, and um, coming to the corporate social responsibility part of the group, we've been doing it for close to four decades. Now coming uh, and talking about the program for persons with disability, close to a decade's time, we have been engaged in this uh, uh, with an hypothesis of uh, empowering persons with disabilities and giving them dignity and accessibility, we initiated this program in two states, UP and Maharashtra. Statistically, these two states were having highest number of persons with disabilities in the country. We have named this program Saksham. Saksham means ability. So we talk about ability and not about disability. What, what we do under this program is we provide accessible and assistive aid to persons with different types of disability, majorly targeting persons with locomotive disability because that's highest in number. We also capacitate the persons with disability to work and to be ready for the industry. The capacities are based on the skills which is required for the industry. We also change the ergonomics of our factories for easy accessibility of persons with disabilities to work in a comfortable ecosystem. A scientific exercise that we did in an automotive setup was the job mapping exercise. The job mapping exercise was done in a way that we looked at all our manufacturing and non-manufacturing functions and we listed the types of disabilities on the other axis and try to find the best match that what type of disability fits in which kind of job role. Accordingly, this exercise was conducted all over our manufacturing facilities and we could identify approximately 1000 opportunities for persons with different types of disabilities. We are proud to share that we have engaged persons with speech and hearing impairment, persons with locomotive disabilities, and many other types of disabilities who are close to 400 in number across our manufacturing locations. Well, so far, our this program has reached to approximately 8,000 people. We face certain difficulties during this pandemic time when we observe that many persons with disabilities have gone back or they are not able to, they were not allowed to come as per the government protocols. We try to reaching them through ration kits. We help them sustain us during this tough period. And now we are in an effort to get them back to our factories for their work. Under this program of suction, we work with close to 35 partners in India. They include NGO partners, they are um, corporate foundations, they are district administrations. It's a unique example of uh, triple P model and not only the public private partnership model, but the people private, private private, private and uh, panchayat private partnership model as well. We try reaching to the rural, a mass of persons with disabilities who is one of the most neglected lot in the country and the accessibilities are really challenging. We have not done this program only in India, but we have gone to Indonesia and Vietnam also for taking this program. That's the vision of our chairman that he doesn't look at just uh, the compliance of CSR, but he thinks that there is something called beyond compliance based on which this kind of uh, programs uh, have been developed under our corporate social responsibility. So um, at this outset, I would like to thank Ashish Srivastava ji, Ariyal ji, representative from SOCHAM. I would like to congratulate my co-winners for this program for the day. I thank the jury for uh, selecting us and uh, we look forward with a narrative to change the world and uh, we have a long way to go. This is, uh, this is very small that we have done. We all collectively can do many more things with this narration. I would like to stop here. Thank you very much. We shall you move. Yeah. I have one.
And finally, I would like to thank Megha Sethi from Delhi Performance Bureau for the first runner-up for the best employer for women in the large category. Megha Sethi. I think Neha is not uh, here, so please, uh, we should go uh, next uh, okay. session. Okay. So we've heard now the journey of, of various corporates as to how they've gone ahead with regards to compliance with diversity and inclusion. Next, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Rajiv Doval. He is the head for Times for India Org uh, to address us and share his views. Mr. Doval. So you're silent, you're on mute. Am I audible now? Yeah. Hi, Vishal. Hi, Sri. Hi. Hi, sir. And uh, all the other jury members and the whole esteemed, you know, people who are here. Um, for me, it's a very important, uh, you know, sort of issue that we are talking about. And, and I don't see it from a very myopic view of uh, uh, gender and diversity. I really see that what's happening in our country, the economy, the economy segment. And, uh, and when I talk about that, I... You know, one word that stuck to me was what was said by Mr. Harial that, uh, you know, we should not look at uh, giving uh, just an opportunity to people with diversity and, uh, you know, people with disabilities, but we should ask them to be active contributors to the businesses. Unless that happens, this is just going to be letter and word. I mean, this is just going to be followed as programs and, you know, Con conferences and discussions, but unless we give them an active participation into the business, uh, till that time, it's really not going to come up. And, and I think when we talk about when we talk about diversity and inclusion, we must not just look at corporates, you know, being part of it. I think it really starts from the start with the education. Done, uh, just, just, just give me one second, please. I'm really sorry for the sound behind that. So uh, basically, I see this as a start of uh, when you start your education, when you when your base is becoming there. I mean, we should be some of the organizations which try to you know ingrain it in the you know, the people who are coming from a little limited background that you know this is sort of a charity or this is sort of a CSR, this is sort of a duty that we are doing. We really don't treat them equally. Uh, it's myself for our organization. Uh, time of year. We have a very large force of employees who are women. We have a very huge amount of inclusion and uh, we have all kinds of people working with us and we have a very, very open atmosphere where we are. And, and there is, you know, there is no CSR or a corporate social responsibility or a charity sort of a feeling with our employees. So I think the key to uh, this whole conference and the key to this whole issue is, as Mr. Dharial very correctly put it, we must include them into the business segment of it. Hence, if Vishal or Sandeep uh, uh, would, uh, would remember when we were having these duty meetings, I was very, very fixated on Even if you have a diverse background, gender diversity is going to be watched out and seen if they are at the deciding positions in the company. Not just part of the company, but they are at the deciding positions of the company. Because they can really feel, they can really understand what has been done. So finally, I congratulate Mr. Jam, I congratulate Mr. Rajput and Sandeep and his whole team, Mr. Vishal Ketia for a very nice, uh, absolutely important uh, discussion on this. Very important topic because this really concerns our economy. Just that it really doesn't get one small money. It really concerns our economy. You must take everybody together. It must be. Uh, so thanks very much for inviting us. Thanks, Rajiv. Uh... Next, I will invite Dr. Prerna Kumar. She is Senior Technical Specialist with the International Center for Research on Women. Dr. Kumar. Hi, thank you everyone. Uh, thank you for inviting the uh, very, very esteemed event. And it's truly exciting to hear from all the participants as well as the winners uh, in terms of the initiatives that are being taken by the industry. Um, since I work specifically in an organization which engages on issues of gender and brings in a, a dimension of research, um, I, I, I really focus on the fact that how time and again we are seeing that despite, uh, you know, India moving in a direction where 
the enrollment rate for girls in education is, is really increasing tremendously. Um, at the same time, we are not seeing that translating into girls and women participating in the economy. Um, and unfortunately, uh, I, I think these numbers were spoken about by uh, Mr. Shivastav as well. So I'm not going to repeat some of that. Uh, but what's very unfortunate with us that is the fact that our social norms and the normative culture that we live in does not necessarily allow girls and women to uh, fulfill their potential. Um, for instance, if we really talk about um, you know uh, uh, the, the 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 fact that less than one fourth of the women in this country are participating in the economy. Uh, it, 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 it's something that that should really shake us up and, and uh, let you know encourage us to ask this question: What is the reason behind women not participating in the economy despite education being provided and despite having access to at least some ba basic education, if not greater skill and training programs? Uh, so that's one question which I would want uh, some of uh, all of us to really think about. Uh, the other important piece for us to think through is uh, that while we completely understand why inclusion and diversity is required, and I think uh, at least people who are on this forum currently appreciate fully well that uh, you know if if we have inclusion and diversity in our workforce, it helps increase the productivity, it enhances the growth, it re reduces even the risks. Uh, some of you spoke very beautifully about how during COVID also you've been able to thrive. As a business uh, with a very diverse workforce. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, uh, we have also seen time and again, um, oftentimes uh, organizations and companies uh, see it more of a, uh, uh, more, uh, see this as, as a commitment to building brand and building goodwill and not really think in terms of the economic gain that they uh, receive from this kind of uh, diversity of workforce. Um, I think uh, the uh, speaker previous to me spoke very beautifully about how this is a very myopic view, and I completely agree and appreciate the fact that uh, we, uh, at least the people on this forum, uh, appreciate uh, that that this myopic view is not something that's going to take us a long way. Um, interestingly, what we have seen time and again is also from from the work that we engage with. We work with several corporate organizations, um, and some of them are global actors and global economic players. Uh, we've seen how, despite the fact that there is um, the, the the felt need is there. Uh, the, the structures and the policies and 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 the functions of within the within the industry does not necessarily uh, allow them to move on the way of uh, inclusion and diversity. Uh, for instance, I can give an example of a of a big apparel industry which we work with, and we have seen uh, how uh, there was a commitment from the leadership in terms of ensuring that they are able to retain their women workforce um, and there were programs conducted for it but then soon it was realized that it's not just the need to work with women the need is also to engage with men who work with these women the need is to create a safe space for women uh, by by really encouraging the men who work with them uh, to to provide that environment and to ensure that they don't really impinge on the rights of these women um, and also how do you then shed uh, the the entire normative thinking uh, because we are embedded in in the social norms that we live with uh, and interestingly uh, that's something that we find most difficult to deal with uh, often we see in our policies uh, women's reproductive role is uh, prioritized over their productive role um, and over what they can uh, you know contribute as uh, uh, to the economy um, and and I think this is also evident with uh, the maternal policy benefits, the maternity policy benefits uh, that women receive, and therefore we have seen how a lot of companies uh, have now started to believe that women investing in women will be a, a, a essential loss for them, and because women are going to take six months leave, how are we going to really manage that? And this is again driven by the social norms that we have, which essentially tells us that it's the woman's responsibility to manage a child and take care of the child and childcare and care economy, which Mr. Shivastav referred to. 
um, is seen primarily primarily driven by the women. Um, I think these are some of the things that we start uh, need to really question and we need to change some of these notions by also creating policies and infrastructure that can really support women uh, through their uh, maternity journey and through their journey of being a mother, uh, but does not really deprioritize their role as a producer or as uh, someone who wants to contribute to the economy. Um, similarly, I think there is also a very critical need for organizations to analyze the gender pay gaps that we get to see. Uh, time and again, we have seen that uh, women are women are not able to negotiate or women uh, uh, are often disadvantaged when it comes to the kind of packages that they are provided as against their uh, male uh, colleagues. Um, and this is something which uh, we, we talk about transparency. We talk about uh, ensuring that the gender pay gap is uh, kind of reduced uh, very, very significantly and, and uh, with a very clear objective of doing that um, and not just by the by. Um, there, there is also a need to, like I had said initially, that while we are working with women, we work with women to build their capacity. There is a need to work with uh, men who work with these women um, and also build women's capacity to take on leadership roles. Uh, often we have seen how women form uh, uh, the, the uh, in, in terms of the entry point jobs, in terms of the middle management, women do fairly well, but then as you know, the, the ladder becomes steeper. Uh, we, we see that women are the ones who tend to fall off that ladder um, and, and they don't don't necessarily find roles of leadership to really move up the ladder within the organization. And these are some of the things that I would sincerely urge uh, organizations uh, to delve deeper into. Um, and I think one issue that I would really uh, point out before I close uh, my conversation here is also the issue of sexual harassment. While most of the organizations and we also have a legal framework uh, for sex uh, prevention of sexual harassment policy, we have seen that uh, that the monitoring of a lot of these policies that are in place and bringing together the evidence to ensure that we are really moving on that path often is missing. Um, and and when we talk about creating a safe space for women to be able to fulfill their potential, it becomes absolutely essential that we do not uh, miss out on tools and data to really support and build a a very evidence based strategy for uh, inclusion, equity and diversity um, in our uh, workforce. Uh, when we talk about inclusion and diversity, we also should not forget that, uh, you know, there are intersections that women also have. So women do not women are not just one big monolith uh, block of population. Uh, women come from various castes, various classes, with various kinds of education backgrounds. Um, and I think it's important that we also create space for ensuring that those intersectionalities are taken care of when we are working uh, with women very closely. Um, I, I would just close it here by uh, saying that um, uh, congratulations to all of you for uh, doing such wonderful work, and it's a great learning for us as well. Um, organizations like ours, uh, women, um, strive to work with uh, with the uh, corporates to ensure that we help you build your evidence base and help you use tools and evidence to ensure that you continue to move and improve your metrics uh, and, and uh, you know, move towards a more equitable uh, society and not just the workforce. Thank you very much. Thank you, Prerna, for uh, sharing your insights in the various challenges which are being faced by women in India. Uh, so again, I will. Uh, I think so. We have heard uh, the experiences of uh, all the uh, winners, and uh, therefore, before we close, I would just kind of make a few uh, concluding remarks. So, first and foremost, I would like to thank uh, Ashish Shivastavji for sparing his time and being uh, together with us, and also hearing the experiences of the various uh, corporates who are present here. Uh, again, uh, if you look at with regards to gender diversity, a lot has been done. But as we've heard from most of the people, a lot more has to be done with regards to even gender diversity. And we're not talking about the other aspects of people with disability, HIV, transgender, LGBTQ. 
uh, again, what one has to understand, and this is what some uh, Mr. Dharial had mentioned that. Uh, with regards to people with disability and uh, other in inclusion, at times you may have to possibly uh, reasonably accommodate them. Okay, so that is something which is very important. Partly, uh, Sri Vastuji also spoke about the care economy where women are devoting five to seven hours per day uh, with regards to home affairs. So that is something which needs to be taken into account with regards to reasonable, uh, re uh, reasonable accommodation. Another important thing which came up was with regards to uh, what uh, Sony Pictures spoke about is that we are actually looking at content which does not promote stereotyping. So I think so that is something which is very important because their content reaches to 700 uh, million people. So I think, uh, and again, Prema spoke about the change that they should not be, uh, that women should not be only uh, recognized for their uh, reproduction capability but also for their uh, uh, productivity so in that case still the time the change does not happen in our mindset we need to acknowledge their uh, contribution to the care economy and make sure that we give them the new weightage so therefore thanks again uh, to everyone once again congratulations to all the awardees and uh, thanks as SOHM for giving us this opportunity and recognizing the champions of dni thank you so much Thank you, Vishalji. Thank you, Rajivji. Thank you, uh, you. Uh, you uh, Additional Secretary, sir, Ashish Sivastava, sir. Thank you, uh, and also the participants. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you for meeting me before time. Best wishes for the next year. Right now.